Today, the NBC Boxing Tour is in scenic Lake Tahoe, and so is former champ Rocky Lockridge. The ultimate for me is to uh, get back uh, the opportunity to fight for the championship, and uh, I feel like uh, it'll be three strikes and I'm out. Hoping to make him swing and miss is young Mike Zena. I can see Rocky beating me. If he beats me then back to school and then I beat Rocky, he better retire. I want to make him retire, for sure. And later on Sports World, the man who took Lockridge's crown, Tony the Tiger Lopez, makes his third title defense as he faces the IBF's number one ranked contender, Tyrone the Harlem Butcher Jackson. It's another boxing twin bill next on NBC. NBC Sports presents Ringside. Brought to you by First Brands Corporation, makers of new Simonized non-abrasive car wax. By Budweiser, Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. And by Brut, quality men's fragrance and toiletries. Brut, it smells like a man. It is a magnificent 75 degree day in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, located in the midst of the still snow-capped high Sierras. Temperatures, in fact, may rise to the high 80s later in the day. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, and we welcome you to the start of our boxing doubleheader day here on NBC. It'll be the former junior lightweight champion, Rocky Lockridge, going against Mike Zena, and then later on on Sports World, the current IBF junior lightweight champ, Tony Lopez, will defend his crown against Tyrone, the Harlem Butcher Jackson, probably the hardest puncher in the division and there may be another factor of significance for uh, these boxers to deal with uh, today in fact some of the fighters on today's card have been in lake tahoe for over a month training to acclimate themselves to the high altitude this part of the sierra nevada mountains is higher than both denver and albuquerque which means that the air is thinner here now this poses the prospect of some boxers wishing they had oxygen masks on by the end of a 10 or 12 round fight what do you make of it is it a factor I think physiologically you can't deny it's a factor, but it's worse mentally. If a fighter's thinking about it, he gets tired. I think the right attitude is Rocky Lockridge's attitude. He came here on Monday, six days is plenty of time, and he gets on with the business of fighting. But for Rocky Lockridge, a loss today could signal the end for a boxer who has become a familiar face to fight fans. I'm Rocky Lockridge. Would you hit a man with glasses on? Well, neither will Miguel Hernandez when we square off this afternoon on NBC Sports World. The Hernandez fight was the beginning of a rise to boxing prominence for Lockridge, a campaign that has taken him around the world from domestic locales such as Beaumont, Texas. If it doesn't go 15 rounds, it will be Roger Mayweather laying on the canvas. to the glamour of the French Riviera and a Monte Carlo matchup with Julio Cesar Chavez. Along the way, it has been a roller coaster career of triumphs and setbacks, comprising 11 years as a pro. I'm primarily in my prime, and uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better, and I understand the reasons that I'm down now. And I think that it's within me uh, as a fighter as well as uh, a, a person to bring the best out. Lockridge has twice brought out the best in IBF champion Tony Lopez, losing his title in 1988 and failing in the rematch earlier this year. Everybody has their place and time, and uh, it's his time now in terms of uh, being uh, above me in terms of being the headliner of the card. Uh, but I'm due. I'm due again. But if he loses, will we have seen the last of boxing's long train running? The ultimate for me is to uh, 
get back uh, the opportunity to fight for the championship. And uh, I feel like uh, it'll be three strikes in our mouth. So this is the third opportunity in terms of uh, regaining the title. Learning from his employer is the intention of Mike Zena, a sparring partner of Lockridge Nemesis Lopez. Tony let me know and about his moves and this and that, but I don't take nothing away from Rocky still. He's a two-time champ and uh, all I can say is going to be a war. As for playing a part in another Rocky rejuvenation, Zena has other plans. The way he's looking at me is I'm going to beat this kid so I could get uh, just like a tune-up. And he's got something else coming because I can't see Rocky beating me. If he beats me, then it's back to school and if I beat Rocky, he better retire. I want to make him retire, for sure. I'm sure he retire. And there is the 21-year-old punk, Cena, out of Los Angeles, now living in San Jose, California, who is hoping to retire the 30-year-old Rocky Lockridge, who has just made his way to the ring. Back with the fight in a moment. Happy, incidentally, use Monday night at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas for the Leonard Hearns fight. As we check out the tail of the tape, Zena with uh, four inches in height on Rocky Lockridge. Everything else on the even side. How about the fight doctor, RX? Uh, what does Rocky Lockridge have to do to come up with the victory? I think Rocky's got to get in close to work on the inside since Zena punches hard from the outside. And then Zena stands straight up so Rocky can loop his punches and connect effectively. And uh, what about the point of view from the Mike Zena camp? He's got to use his strength to keep Rocky at a distance where his punches are effective. And better than that, he's got to keep the older Rocky off balance with a pressure attack. He cannot let up on Rocky. Under Nevada rules, the scoring is on the 10-point must system handled by the uh, three judges. A three-knockdown rule is in effect. Three knockdowns in one round, and the fight is over. Uh, the bell saves the fighter only in the final round, and no standing eight count, although there is a mandatory eight. And the judges are all from the state of Nevada. Keith McDonald, John McSweeney, and Herb Santos. Now let's go to the ring for Jim Hall and the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caesars Tahoe. This match is scheduled for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. It is refereed by Mills Lay. Introducing first in the red corner, this young man is from San Jose, California. He weighs 133 pounds with a record of 16 wins against two losses and one draw with 10 wins by knockout. Here's Mike Zena. This young man is from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. He weighs 132 pounds with a record of 43 wins against seven losses and 35 wins by knockout. This is the former IBF and WBA junior lightweight champion of the world, Rocky. Good crowd on hand, better than 7,000. And most of the crowd rooting for the California Mike Zeno. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions over here? Any questions over here? Let's get it on. Come on. All right. Let's get it on, says Mills Lane. Not a man you want to mess around with, Ferdy. He is the district attorney in Reno, Nevada. I thought he did very good in Lonesome Duff. Yes. Doesn't he look a lot like Robert Duval to you? Yes. Uncanny resemblance. And this is round one, scheduled for 10. It is an over-the-weight junior lightweight bout. Mike Zeta comes in at 17-2, and two, 11 by knockout. His most recent fight, May 10th in Oakland. He stopped Ruben Munoz in six. He's won his last two by knockout after dropping two straight decisions. His only professional losses. Lucky Lockridge has been a slow starter in the past. He, of course, out of Tacoma, Washington, now living in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Record of 43 and 7, 35 by knockout. Zena starting off not showing any respect at all. Hard body blows to Rocky Lockwich. And Rocky's looping those punches to the head, as we said, not connecting just yet. From what we have seen of Zena, he is shown to be a stand-up style boxer. 
Appears to be a good right hand by Lockridge. Usually he's in the most comfortable with an opponent who will stand right in front of him. He is not a one-punch knockout artist, more of a combination boxer. Zena calls it combination power. He does some, have some power with the right hand. Well, he's starting to be throwing combinations now. Both of them are getting very close to each other, and the punches are landing effectively. the midway point of round one. Lockridge's last fight was back in March when he lost that rematch to Tony Lopez in another 12-round decision fighting for the IBF Junior lightweight title. Made the mistake of staying in front of Lopez too long. He got uppercut a lot in that fight. In this fight, there has not been an uppercut, but boy, a lot of looping uh, punches and hooks, and both men are punishing the body. Given the idea that he was strongly considering retirement after that loss to Tony Lopez, and you heard the comments of uh, Mike Zena, who would like to push Lockridge in that direction. Oh, there goes Zena. He's going in another direction. So Zena put down here in round number one. And as you can see, a half better left in the round. Solid punch caught Zena coming in. Remember, Rocky does have that punching power. He's spreading his legs way out. Is Rocky Lockridge now. Maybe too far to get the leverage he needs for that knockout punch. But he certainly has taught Zena a lesson this first round. So much for the pattern of Rocky Lockridge starting slowly, which we have seen on many occasions, although not against Roger Mayweather when he came up with that first round knockout, and not here in round one against Mike Zena. <laughs> Budweiser. I was just thinking about Brute cologne, deodorant, and everything else. Brute, it smells like a man. Perfect example of that looping right hand that put down Zena toward the end of the first round and certainly lost him the round, 10-8. So it is on to round two, and Lockridge gets him with the right hand once again. That Zena stands straight up and down makes it uh, makes him an inviting target to Rocky who all of his career has been able to punch from all angles he can come in he can punch out he is a veteran and complete fighter and Zena has gone down on the three previous occasions twice to Mauricio Beltram who defeated Zena by decision last November and once put down by Armando Baeza who also won by decision over Zena those his two professional losses Lockridge outside those thick glasses. I keep telling him, I don't think you can see your opponents right when you get in. He, he denies it, but it still looks like he's squinting at him. And again, Zena goes down off the combination from Lockridge. Second time Zena has gone down. The three knockdown rule is in effect, but that means three knockdowns in one round, and the fight is over. Zena standing straight up and down and giving him no side-to-side -side motion is an open invitation to the to the right hand of uh, Rocky Lockridge. He knows he can land it. It's two rounds now that he's uh, down low blow just then by Zena. the first part of our boxing doubleheader coming up later on Sports World. It will be Tony Lopez defending his IBF Junior lightweight title going against Tyrone, the Harlem Butcher Jackson. That'll be coming up on Sports World. One thing about Rocky is a real professional. He doesn't get excited. He doesn't. He just, that's what you're talking about when you say a veteran fighter. He just knows he's got him. He's going to take his time, and it'll come. And we're down to 30 seconds remaining. In the second round, it is scheduled 
For 10, Rocky Lockridge has had his way against Mike Zena. Lockridge, the elder statesman of the Duva stable. That includes Amanda Holyfield and Meldrick Taylor and Colonel Whitaker. Coming up on 10 seconds left now. In the second. And Lockridge teeing off as this second round concludes. Rocky Lockridge right there on the button and down goes Zeno for another got the two uh, rounds that he's been oh now Rocky just went down well a sudden turn as Lockridge was surprised here in round three and here comes Zeno Lockridge has been down on a number of occasions Lopez put him down in their last bout back in March. So Zeno went down twice, once in the first, once in the second, and Lockridge looking very shaky. He is in genuine trouble as Rocky Lockridge. He got caught by a big left hook. He went down. He did not get up in good shape. He's been fighting back, and his corner is saying, don't try to fight back. Try to hold him. And that voice you hear is not Duba, it's Johnny Bumpus. Bump City Bumpus yelling, move around, but Rocky cannot move around. His legs are dead on him. Johnny Bumpus, one-time champion, now working the corner for Rocky Lockers. They grew up together in the Tacoma, Washington area. Midway through, round number three, Lockers now scoring with the uppercut. Zena's letting a golden opportunity go by. I can't imagine a young man like this running out of gas in the third round, but he has let Rocky off of a big, big hook. Rocky's still not himself. He's not sharp. But Zena is not doing anything to heighten his demise. And the female voice you may occasionally be hearing is Carolyn Lockridge offering advice to her husband, who has certainly been able to get back into it. Less than a minute to go in round three. Zena should be inviting a punch out where Rocky gets careless, but he's not. He is waiting for Rocky to get off first, and that's inexperience. He just doesn't know how lucky he is to have Rocky Lockwood just close to the end. A good right hand by Lockwood to mix that flurry. Another good right hand after that one, and it's got Zeno thinking. Final second, round three. Zeno went down in round one and two. Lockridge put down here on the third, but appears to have recovered. Jay, today we're talking. Here's that nice, crisp left hook by Zena that puts Rocky down, and it was a resounding knockdown. Look at that. And take another look at that, and you can see how flush on the jaw it was. When they say this kid's a combination puncher, Zena is a combination puncher, and every once in a while he comes zinging in there and knocks the guy, right? his opponent down. He did that time. Rocky was lucky to survive that round. And Mike Zena is the one who feels he cannot be out-muscled, but he had never been in with... A fighter of the caliber of a Rocky Lockridge who is very strong for his size. Lockridge may be on the downside in terms of his career, but still represents a great deal of strength uh, to the 21-year-old Mike Zeno. Remember that Rocky goes down when he gets up fighting. He did what Tony Lopez. He's done it all his career. He is uh, incredibly brave. He's got a big, big heart. And uh, this round should tell us whether Rocky's on the way back. Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, outdoors at Caesars Tahoe Hotel and Casino in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. <laughs> that was a looping right in. It missed, but boy, intention was there. And 
Zena is attempting to use some muscle now on Lockridge. Notice the left shoulder dipping into Lockridge. He's trying to outstrengthen him now. Mike Zena out of Los Angeles, now living in San Jose, California. Grew up in Mexico. His mother is Mexican. His father is Italian. He has fought his way out of poverty. And this is the biggest fight of his career. Good. I like to eat at his house. Yes. Both those cuisines are good. Showing great versatility at the uh, dining table, I'm sure. Low blow by Zena. Good right by Lockridge. Lockridge reverting that style we've seen so many times where he just pity pats, pity pats, and all of a sudden throws a very hard punch. Under a minute remaining. And round four, we've had knockdowns in each of the first three rounds. Zena going down twice, and Lockridge was stunned in round three. Now, why is Zena standing there taking all those shots without any attempt at a comeback when he should be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Showtime, that's the code name, meaning 30 seconds left to go. Let it all go and win the round. Snap it like you mean it, says Carolyn Lockridge. As we come to the end of the fourth. Monroe Gasmatic Shocks and Struts. They help your vehicle hold the road. Hey, I feel safer already. So do I. For a smoother, safer ride, America rides Monroe. And this is round five from Lake Tahoe. Rocky Lockridge and Mike Zena scheduled for 10. It is an over-the-weight junior lightweight bout. Hey, good, good. All we learned off that last round is that Rocky recovered and was fresher than the younger man who seemed to have been slightly out of gas. Zena has been punching very low. You would think the opposite is true since he's so much taller. Yes, Zena, five foot nine, has four inches on Lockridge. Lockridge with a great advantage in terms of experience. He has fought 135 championship rounds and 12 world title fights. The one-time WBA and IBF Junior lightweight champion. When you fought that much, you've seen it all. There's nothing new that can happen to you in the ring, including a knockdown. Rocky just doesn't get rattled. He goes right back to work. And Lockridge went down and in round three. Zeta hit the canvas in rounds one. And two, good uppercut by Lockridge. Coming up on the halfway point of the fifth round. Again, Lockridge with that uppercut that, that scored. Later on, back at our New York studios, Gail Gardner will have more on the shocking death of John Matuzak. And we'll be hearing from uh, Raiders owner Al Davis. That'll be coming up uh, later on. And Zena putting some pressure on. Good right hand, back behind the ear, landed by Lockwood. Zena breathing out of his mouth now and really looking a little the worse for wear and tear. And he has, he's been training here in uh, Lake Tahoe with Tony Lopez, been a sparring partner for Lopez, so he feels he is better adjusted to the uh, thin air here in Lake Tahoe. As mentioned earlier, Rocky Lockridge did not arrive until this past Monday. He was training with Lopez, but he's fighting with Lockridge, and it's Lockridge that's getting him tired, not the altitude. It's these punches that are zinging in there are getting to him. A 
strong round for Rocky Lockridge. We'll be back in a moment. I use Carolyn Lockridge, who has been offering quite a bit of advice during the course of uh, this uh, bout to husband uh, Rocky. The twin boys, Ricky and Lamar, four years old, are, are back home on this uh, Father's Day. But uh, we have been hearing from Carolyn throughout. What does the Fight Doctor uh, scorecard show? I have it 48-44 because uh, Rocky's uh, two big rounds, one and two, were 10-8 rounds as the third was a 10-8 round for Mike Zena. So Rocky comfortably ahead, 48-44. And he's got to worry about this uh, Zena because he punches. Scoring is on the 10-point must system handled by three judges all from Nevada. You saw Lockridge again stumble back. Rocky's legs aren't so great, but he's had so many fights. With the kind of punch that Zena's got, don't ever count him out of this fight. He's in this fight. And you just can't tell how much Rocky's going to take before he starts to really slow down. And from the corner of uh, Lockridge, Johnny Bumpus uh, yelling, hey, you're throwing only one punch at a time. Step it up. Uh, I don't know what he's watching because all I can see is nonstop punching from Rocky Lockridge. He's, he may not zing a jab in there, but the jab is like radar. It's just like to place his right hand. Well, I, I think he's referring to the opening part of this, uh, this sixth round. There's Carolyn Lockridge. So uh, Rocky getting advice from his corner and then off to his left. And I bet you Rocky can't hear anybody, but he can hear his wife clear as a bell. <laughs> He's going to listen to that the rest of tonight. There you go, jab. As uh, Muduva says, don't use the jab. Just under one minute remaining in the sixth round. Right hand grazed Zena. That was a five-punch combination before that with every kind of punch you saw ending up with an uppercut. So Rocky's trying hard. Rocky Lockridge with a record of 43 and 7. 35 by knockout. A stinky uppercut from Lockridge. But Zena back with the combination. Zena's punches are all arm punches when he comes forward. He's terribly out of balance, and his, his feet are not placed to punch hard. And that will wrap it in round six. I'm not sure where to get my muffler fixed. Watch Zena's feet, his lack of balance as he comes forward. His feet are all just crossed over. He, he has no power. But nonetheless, he was driving Rocky Lockridge back, and he had a good round. And this is round seven with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Marv Albert from Lake Tahoe, Nevada. About scheduled for 10. Rocky Lockridge turned professional back in 1978. He's had 12 world title fights in a distinguished career. He's put Zena down twice in rounds one and two, and Zena decked Lockridge in the third. Another aspect that we have neglected to say is that Zena has been taking heavy shots and taking them well. Outside of those first two uh, times that he went down, he's been taking everything Rocky has landed, uppercuts, right hands, everything. So. That's a point also in favor of uh, young Mike Zena. And you wonder if this should go the distance and to the scorecards, even though Zena hails from San Jose, California, the crowd has been solidly behind him. And uh, you wonder if that will have a degree of influence with the, the judges are all from the uh, state of Nevada. Rocky has been on the wrong end of some, some tough decisions. Good combination 
by Locker. Excellent attack with nothing back by Zena. to get off first and uh, pile up some points here when he was um, well ahead in this round after that big flurry on the ropes. Combination by Zena to shake up Lockridge with a half minute to go in the seventh round. Neither man showing a great deal of zip here. They both look like they're sort of in modified slow motion. They're not really punching very hard. Now here comes Rock on the attack. Left hook by Lockwood. And down goes Zena. Final seconds of the round. Looping right hand is what's going to do it to Zena once again. There he goes again. That's the third time that that looping right hand has put down Mike Zena, and he's lucky it was that close to the belt. So Zena has gone down three times in the first, the second, and the seventh, and Lockridge looking to pour it on. Lockridge went down on the third. Zena comes right back. Zena's back, and he landed a good right hand. It buckled Rocky a little bit. And the crowd urging Zena on as he was able to answer the onslaught from Lockridge. That's when it looked like he was just hitting shoulders and nothing else. One got through to the jaw. Another low blow, series of low blows. Excellent combination by Zena. And again, Kurt Lockridge. Boy, and Lockridge was right, riding that line there between getting um, very shaky. First of all, he let it all go in that first round. Very uncharacteristic of Rocky Lockridge. And then he got caught. You wonder the effect on both boxers uh, from the heat. 76 degrees outdoors, plus the television lights and the, the altitude. And the age. That in the case of Lockridge. Who is oh. 30 years old and certainly on the downside of a uh, career that uh, has been a shining one. But he was talking retirement after that loss to uh, Tony Lopez back, back in March. Hey, if you remember, he talked retirement after Chavez. I've never heard of fighter retiring as many times in his mind as Rocky Lockridge did. But if he lost here, I think it would be a valid thought. Oh, and Zeno was hurt again. He's gone down for a fourth time. Looked to be the uh, shot to the side. Seven, eight. He might have cracked the rib because I never saw a guy go over. down ever. It's all over. He could not get up. And Rocky Lockridge has stopped Mike Zeno in round eight. Zena went down for a fourth time. And Lockridge comes up with the victory. He is now 44 and 7, 36 by knockout, but certainly did not have an easy time. You mentioned retirement if he had lost, but uh, you wonder if he should be thinking about ending the career even in this situation. I, I know that uh, uh, Lou and Dan Duva say, say no. Why should he if he uh, can keep getting quality fights? And I'm sure that he's thinking, well, maybe he would get uh, yet another shot at the title down the road. 
I think that's the only thing that would keep him in, a thought of a title shot as far as if he's going to have trouble with this type of fighter, then he should be thinking about retirement. Uh, let's take a look at the end of this. The particular body shot must have fractured a rib or something because I, I've never seen a guy go down that quick. That shot right there, now he goes down. I mean, that is a perfect example of a body shot taking your legs out from under. You hear it and hear it and hear it. You never see it so specifically as here. There it is, right to the end, his legs just go in a similar fashion that Spinks did with Tyson, a body shot that just took the legs right out from under him. Perfect.